first things that I tell students when they'll start weight training here in this class is the results that you would like to see is going to be a direct reflection on uh, the intensity and the effort that, that you put in. Probably my favorite part about it is like seeing self-improvement. I wanted to uh, hit this goal by this time and being able to like reach that or not reaching it and then setting a new one. Honestly, I just love the fact that there's no coach, there's no team, there's no one telling you what to do. It's you versus you. You're figuring out everything on your own. So initially starting out, I actually got into fitness as a way to lose weight. You know, I was always a little more overweight as a child, you know, growing up. You know, I was always one of the heavier kids in the class. And um, I just saw the gym as a way to get fitter, lose weight. Uh, one day went over with my friend and we went over to the weight section, hopped on the bench press, started doing it, uh, ended up really liking it. Next time I worked out, did my cardio and ended up going back to the weight section, was just experimenting. After just going through months and months of trial and error, trying different things out, uh, different rep ranges, different programs, different exercises, I learned a lot and I decided that I wanted to commit myself to getting in the best shape of my life. Depending on how I'm feeling, you know, life outside the gym, I either like to lift with uh, some of my friends or alone. There was a long period of time, like last year, where I just wanted to uh, lift alone because when you're with lots of your friends, especially, it, there's a lot more room to like mess around. If I'm like feeling like I need that extra boost though, lifting with uh, a group of people, like three max, is really good because you push each other a lot more and you really bring the best out of each other. Uh, when I initially started, I was always weightlifting with uh, a, a lot of people. Uh, at one point I had a group of like five guys and we'd all go into the gym together. And I just felt like honestly, it took away from the workouts. You know, it was fun, it was a social thing. We all talked, we joked around. But at the end of the day, we'd do like, you know, maybe six sets and then talk the whole time. So I felt like, you know, at the end of the day, my most productive workouts have been on my own where I can really put in my music, zone out, lock in and just Get, the, get my workout done. I still uh, lift with a couple of my friends, my good friend Eric, we lift from time to time. Um, I, it, honestly, it honestly varies, so depending on you know who wants to lift, who's available, I'll lift with people, but honestly, uh, for the most part right now, I lift on my own. It's actually helped open up a few doors for me to connect with other people that are uh, interested in the same things I'm interested in. I've made a lot of my friends and I've helped some of my friends like start going to the gym. It's really helped me develop a tighter social group and get closer to people um, that I wouldn't have been able to do without it. Well, for the high school setting, steroids have no part, they shouldn't have any part in the collegiate setting either. I'm sure it happens. Steroids are really meant for the bodybuilding world. In the world of competitive team athletics, everybody's got tests to make sure that it's a level playing field. Um, it's, it's not great for your health and long-term uh, health-wise, there are bodybuilders that die from different heart issues at a much earlier age in the 30s and 40s and 50s. But in terms of high school athletes, I mean, it has no part in our program and training whatsoever. At, at the age of a 14 to 18 year old athlete, which is typically the age range that I'd be working with, um, just by them immersing themselves into training, you're gonna see gains that they make on a very rapid basis just because they've never done this before. So I actually have a close friend who actually decided to hop on a cycle of SARMs, which is, stands for Selective Antigen Receptor Modulators. So they're not exactly like steroids in which you're injecting a, a hormone, but they basically like, without getting too into the science of it, they act and then they react with the antigen receptors in your muscles. So they're kind of mimicking the effects. So one of the things that I saw it of him was that he actually had to go to the doctor because his heart was out of control. His blood pressure was like 180 over 90, which is extremely high. And he actually ended up messing up his left ventricle. So for me, it's just not worth it because I don't want to deal with the health consequences. So personally, um, never taken steroids. But um, as someone who you know works out in an environment where a majority of the people are enhanced, or juicing or on steroids, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people would say it's cheating. I don't think it's cheating. I think that steroids are a, you know, a tool that people can use to 
achieve their goals quicker or in a you know different way. I know some of the best power lifters in the world are enhanced uh, simply because there's something called a natural limit. If you you know diet for your whole life, train hard, you can only do so much. There's only a certain point your natural potential will take you in weightlifting. And steroids are just a way to go past that. And I. I think the stigma around steroids is like it's some kind of evil drug that you know only people who cheat take. And in a pers in a professional sports setting, I would argue yes. But in just simply a gym or weightlifting or powerlifting setting, I would argue that you still need to diet, you still need to train hard, you still need to put in the same work, if not more, than the average lifter who's not on steroids. And um, I just have a great deal of respect for everyone who lifts weights. I would recommend for somebody that's like I don't know maybe like ninth grade like a freshman trying to get into weightlifting they don't know where to start probably to do a lot of their own research um, and if you have like a trainer on campus or whatnot to talk consult with them and people who have experience because uh, lots of new people in the gym don't really know what they're doing and they don't know how to start training properly and how they should like what they should eat or like what they should be trying to do in, in and out of the gym, you know, to maximize results. And they get discouraged from that because they don't see like enough change to want to pursue it. So being able to research on YouTube, online, you know, um, talking to people with experience and credentials and yeah, it really does help like build up confidence in an individual and really like form like a sense of identity, like you associate with something that you feel like really resonates with you. So if anybody is uh, slightly interested in like weight training or whatnot, I'd recommend uh, just trying it out because there's really nothing to lose.